Twitter art tutorials. Do they work? Let's find out. This one by Reno Tuna has eight steps and seems simple enough. Let's begin. First, sketch and line art. It says to draw lines for the structure and outline, but not for any shadows. Let's get a doodle from the doodle pile and clean it up a bit. Done. Step two, base colors. Separate the objects so that you can identify them even when the liner is off. I blocked in the colors with a brush and paint bucket because my lines aren't clean. Not perfect, but good enough. All right, step three. Describe the shape of the shadow to show the direction of light. It says to consider the ratio of light to shadow and to increase the detail complexity when the shadow passes through complex lines which define the structure. Here is the problem. Is this all in one layer? If you read ahead, it says to separate the shadows and use different layer modes for each. So I'm assuming that between these steps, each shadow is on a different layer. How I did it was, the light gray is the original layer and the big shadows are on another layer clipped to that. And step four. To describe structures that couldn't be described by two tones, don't blend and use angular painting. I'm guessing angular painting means don't use a soft brush, so I'm using a semi-hard brush where the opacity changes based on the pressure. On the layer above, I select the original shadow layer and use a soft brush for the big gradient. Then below, I did these lighter shadows on another layer. And back to the original layer, I used the soft brush for a lighter gray. Step 5. Shadow color. Change the shadows and other layers according to color theory. Then it describes to change the shadow shade to multiply layer, occlusion shadow as color burn, tint where you added light as overlay, and line as linear burn. The second part here means take all the layers you made for the shadows and change the layer modes to these settings. Color theory is just Reno Tuna saying, you're on your own for this, use the colors you like. Which is fine, you just gotta figure out the colors yourself. I just experimented because I only had a vague idea of what each mode does. Multiply, color burn, and linear burn all make stuff darker in general, but overlay makes stuff lighter and darker depending on the color you use. So I just did the safe option. Desaturated orange for the skin shadows and dark orange for everything else, with very little blue here and there to vary the shadow colors. Just alpha lock the layers and color. I'm addicted to the lasso fill tool because it's so much faster than a brush. I also changed the line art colors to make the skin look softer. Good enough. Step 6. Blend. Don't zoom in, use a big brush with pen pressure and describe the round parts. I tried to keep the canvas small and use this brush again on a layer over top all the colors and below the lines. Zooming out helps with looking at the painting as a whole. It's a pretty good tip. Step 7. Clean up and detail. Add details with the small brush with the colors you made and use layer options for extra details. I just zoomed in and painted on the layer over top everything. The hard brush, my pencil brush, since that's what I use for the line art. Just render, basically. I added a bunch of shines to show the shiny materials as well. Step 8. Adjustments and fixing. Fix the shape or color and then use a filter to adjust the overall color and finish. I turned the layers on and off to compare my changes to the original and used a glow dodge layer for the filter. It just makes the part I painted a bit brighter. Hmm, this is a pretty good workflow, and I did end up with a fully colored character. But what if I wanted a background? I just made a very simple background with a spotlight, then used a hard light layer and tone curve to adjust the colors of the character to match the background, with Perlin noise on overlay mode and Gaussian blur. Pretty good. 
Looks like this workflow is designed to break up the steps of drawing, form, shadow, and color to allow for a more structured and faster drawing time. But how long did this actually take me? Step 1, actually drawing the form took me 2 hours and 34 minutes. Step 2, flats took me 43 minutes. The rendering steps 3 to 8 took me 1 hour and 34 minutes. Then, adding the simple background took another 25. In total, this took me 5 hours and 16 minutes. And compared to my original drawing method, which takes me 8 to 10 hours, this tutorial let me save 3 to 5 hours. Not bad at all. I feel like step 3 and 4 is a bit hard to comprehend because the layer structure isn't described, unless you read ahead to infer or used other resources. But other than that, I would give this tutorial a 10 out of 10. Wood paint again. I do realize one of these steps is just wing it, step 5, but if you can get over that and experiment, if your goal is to paint fast, I would tell you to give this a try. SSS plus tier tutorial. I guess there are some useful tutorials out there. Maybe I'll make this a new series? Testing Twitter tutorials so you don't have to. <laughs> Also, this artist is on YouTube actually, so if you want to see more Reno Tuna stuff, check it out. I love these object paintings. They take objects and make character designs out of them. Anyways, see ya!